We begin on page two of our bulletin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. I invite you to lift your palms high in the air. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Children are invited to Sunday school, and you may, you may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall put my, to my shame who vindicates me is near. Who will connect with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. Is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 31 together in unison. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and your loving kindness save me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the, t at, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. You are invited to say along with everyone the portions that are in italics. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Judas, who betrayed him, said, While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Peter said to him, And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, At once he came up to Jesus and said, and kissed him. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you see that I do not appeal to my father, and you are at once sending more of the twelve and ten of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that the Messiah will come in the name of the Lord? Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I see the invocations, and you do not arrest me. 
Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, The high priest stood up and said, But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, But he denied it before all of them, saying, When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, Again, he denied it with an oath. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of men, for your actions betray you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said, Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Barabbas. 
all of them said, But they shouted all the more. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, Then the people as a whole answered, So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. We trust in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. That is. When some of the bystanders heard it, they said. At once. One of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Many women were also there, looking on from a distance, They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said,
So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Truly this man was God's Son, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you've been to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas in the last 24 years, you may have ridden the boomerang. The park introduced the boomerang in 1999. It's been a popular one. Like any ride, you watch group after group as you wait in line, train after train, inching ever closer to your own turn. Knowing your turn gets closer and closer makes your stomach feel a little uneasy. On the boomerang, the ride pulls the train backwards 125 feet in the air and stopping momentarily. You get this kind of lovely view from high up. Doesn't last long, though. The ride releases the cars to speed over a corkscrew and then a vertical loop all at about 60 miles per hour, pulling pulling 5.2 Gs in the process. Gives you that feeling where your stomach moves up about six inches and your chest even up into your throat a little bit. And then the boomerang has this added surprise of slowing you down by going up an incline of 125 feet in the air, only to release the train again so you go and do the whole thing again but backwards. The entire ride is over in about two minutes, but in those two minutes it achieves the goal of giving you that discombobulated, stomach-twisting feeling. The boomerang has nothing on Palm Sunday. We arrive at Palm Sunday with excitement. I mean, it begins with joy. We get to be outside. It's like having class outside sometime, you know? A little different than the normal beginning to church. We usually don't get to wave around palm branches, and everybody gets to process in, not just the altar servers and the choir. Everyone is invited to join in the parade to a very joyous hymn. We reenact what we find in Scripture, this reception of Jesus. Our service echoes the cheerfulness of Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. Crowds greet Jesus and his followers with shouts of joy, and they lay down palms and their cloaks on the road. You might say, well, why palms? Laying down palms, and uh, it was a common practice to welcome kings and conquerors. It celebrated great leaders who showed up in triumph. This moment clearly expresses the expected victory of Jesus. You know, everybody's on team Jesus. Go Jesus. And like the boomerang, that serene moment abruptly shifts. Our collect, after the procession, changes the tone pretty quickly, talking about great humility, suffering death on a cross, walking in the way of suffering. That's not the kind of victory I signed up for. And if that weren't enough, the second gospel reading, pretty unusual for a Sunday service, tells the story of the Passion. You might wonder, why why do we call that the Passion? The Latin word passio simply means suffering. We quickly move from cheerfulness, from shouts of joy, to celebrating the expected victory of Jesus to suffering, to crucifixion. Throughout the history of the church, this last Sunday of our Lenten season holds these two stories together. We are presented with this wonderful moment full of serenity, this lovely view of Jesus riding triumphantly into Jerusalem. And then the passion story drops us into the pain and humility of the cross. Leaves you with that uneasy feeling in your gut. The church has the long practice of this, not just to bombard you with the most scripture you can possibly take in one sitting, but to speak about the nature of Christ and the kingdom of God. In the triumphant entry, we find the Jesus we probably prefer, a victorious Jesus, a Jesus of strength. It's easy to follow a winner, someone we expect to come in and and right all of the wrongs. We would prefer that 
Jesus who comes in and conquers like the kings of our day, riding into town in glory. The parade with palms looks like the glory we know, the kind of kingship that we are familiar with. Instead, Christ walks to the cross in suffering and in humility. The Jesus we get is the one who suffers the shame of the cross. The stark contrast is clear from the moment the soldiers come to arrest Jesus. The disciples react by wielding a sword, to which Jesus says, put your sword back. Don't you think that I can appeal to my Father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? This kingdom does not arrive by force. It is not subject to the violence, the powers we know. The glory of God takes place in a surprising way. Christ doesn't operate by our understanding, by our standards of success and strength. Because by all account, the cross looks like ultimate loss. This hopeful movement, Jesus, that's been going on for three years, is is stamped out by the religious leaders and the Roman war machine. That is the culmination of all of this ministry of Jesus. So how is this helpful to the followers of Jesus? What does this say about the kingdom of God? We are reminded that Christ's victory doesn't come through power or through force. What we see take place in Christ's passion story is the refusal of the Lord to be anything other than love even to the very end. It powerfully tells of love rejected, but not hate retaliated. There is victory in the cross, just not the comfortable kind of victory that we expect or hope for. As Jesus cries out with a loud voice and draws his last breath, the earth shakes, and a centurion declaims, truly this man was God's son. Now, while the centurion is probably responding to the disruption of nature, the the great big earthquake, this statement reflects that the cross does reveal the divinity of Jesus. Truly, this man is God's son because love incarnate cannot be overcome, even through death on the cross. Christ shows that love is stronger than hatred. As we enter into Holy Week, the sacred time of recalling the events surrounding Christ's death, it feels a little bit like a roller coaster, especially Palm Sunday. And like the boomerang, we don't just hear this once and move on. We've walked closely through the last days of Christ and the services that we'll have later in the week, especially Good Friday, hearing another version of Christ's death. And much of it causes a little uneasiness, some discomfort, pulling your stomach kind of up into your throat a little bit. But hearing again the story, the one that sets the foundation for all that we believe, reminds us of the kind of victory that Jesus brings. The kingdom of God isn't interested in the power and the victory we know. We don't always get the Jesus we would prefer, strong Jesus. In the cross, we find the Jesus that we need. Because the Lord shows the refusal to be anything other than love, even to the end. Truly, this man was God's son. Amen. Prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For Blake, Max and Gray, Brennan, Tim and Peggy, Bill, Alice, Colleen, John, Robert, Kathy, Judith, Steve, Meg, Nikki, Kelly, Yvette, the Hernandez family, Robert, Jeffrey, the Covenant School in Nashville, and for all the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of David and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning to all of you who are joining us online as well. Uh, we started a little differently, so I didn't get to welcome you. Uh, welcome to anybody who's joining us for the first time. We are glad that you're here. Um, if you want to find out more information about the church or if you want to give us your information, there's some little cards in the pew backs in front of you, uh, little QR codes and things like that. Um, there's a lot of stuff in your bulletin today. You don't know, it's probably falling all over. Um, but uh, there's some important things coming up. Obviously, Easter is, uh, is upon us almost. So um, this little sheet of paper, um, kind of like we do with poinsettias at Christmas, um, if you would like to give uh, a lily or more than one lily um, in honor of someone, you can fill this out uh, with a gift, and you can put that in the offering plate as it comes forward, or you can give that to the church. But we need to know uh, by Monday so that we can uh, add those into the bulletin as we create our, our Easter bulletin. Um, this little sheet, hang on to because it tells you the times for all of our Holy Week services. Um, and so we encourage all of you to come on Maundy Thursday, um, which we have the washing of the feet and the institution of the Lord's Supper. Um, and that takes place at 6 p.m. And then we have Good Friday service at noon and the Easter vigil service at 8 p.m. Um, and if you've never come to an Easter vigil service, it's a really great service. It's a little bit longer, and it's at night. <laughs> but um, if you are going to come to that service, we have some bells, but we encourage you to bring bells with you. Um, and we will start our Easter vigil service outside, kind of like we did uh, this morning. 
Um, I'm going to, what's up here, Mary Hayden? I'm going to turn it over to Mary Hayden briefly. Hi, I'm Mary Hayden Manning. I'm the director of Youth, Children, and Family Ministries here. Um, I wanted to let you all know if you've been to St. David's for Easter before and participated in our, in our Easter egg hunt, we will be doing it a little differently this year. So we will be starting in the school courtyard after the service, after the 1030 service next week. Um, threes and under will go out to the pre-K-2 playground that is on Canterbury Hill and then older than that will go out to the big school playground out there. So we're, we hope it will be easier to contain them until we are ready. Um, also, we still have space for our Easter egg, you've been egged fundraiser that the youth group is doing. I think there's information in your bulletin. If you have questions about that, please come find me. Thank you. Um, another announcement for children is uh, we are, our children's choir is performing at, on Easter Day. Um, and so they were, are going to be having their last rehearsal right after this service. So if you want your child to perform, uh, to sing along with the children's choir on Easter, uh, you can come. Even if you haven't come to prior rehearsals, uh, you can bring your child and that's directly following this service. Um, as many of you know, we have a relationship with Wilshire Elementary that's just across Harry Wurzbach here, and uh, we are always trying to find ways to support them. And uh, one pretty easy way um, is if you have a big bag of uh, disposable grocery bags, you know, those plastic ones you get from HEB or from wherever, uh, they are collecting those. And so if you have a bunch of those that you need to get rid of, you can bring those up to the church. Um, and this is actually a fundraiser for them. They'll be getting money uh, if they make it to a certain point. So uh, if you need to get rid of some plastic bags, you can bring them up to the church. Also for Wilshire, we're collecting clothing, uh, especially for kids. If you have any kind of gently used children's clothing uh, that you want to get rid of, uh, you can bring those up to the church. But also if you have some adult clothing uh, gently used that you'd like to give away, uh, we're collecting that as well. I will let you read the rest of these announcements because we have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, but I really hope that you will join us um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and of course on Easter Sunday. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? Birthdays? No? No? Oh, I've got one. If I wait long enough, they appear. Davis has a support system. Um, how old are you turning, Davis? Six. Six. Okay, let us pray for our birthday. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls, and in his heart may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Anniversary, how many years? 28. Let us pray for our anniversary. Grant, O God, in your compassion that this couple, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Happy anniversary. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 